Hi guys, my name is Shar and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about how to find an apartment using Chinese apps here in China. Okay, so let me introduce to you the four apps that I have tried to find an apartment. First app is Lanjia. Second app is 58 Tongcheng. Third app is Ziru, or in English it's Ziru. Fourth app is Xiangyi, or the brand name is Huai. Huajia. So those are the four apps that I have used to find an apartment. Okay, let me explain them briefly, one by one, and you know you could come to your own conclusion which app is better for you. Okay, um, so Lanjia and 58 Tongcheng, they have apartments for rent. But Chinese people, I, and I asked a Chinese friend uh, for this information, Chinese people use these two apps to buy an apartment and not to rent one. So meaning to say they have less options for you to look at. Um, so I guess we could kick those two apps away. Comes down to Ziru and Xiangyi or Huai Wajia. Ziru or Xiangyi, they're kind of similar. Ziru or Ziru or Ziru, it's a more established brand because it has been, you know, established longer. Xiangyi or Huai Wajia is relatively newer compared to Ziru. So what's the difference between these two? There are quite little details. Firstly, if you decide to go with this method, you need to remember that these are companies, so you need to pay agency fee. Oh, sorry. They don't call it agency fee. They call it service fee because they use this service fee to cover your Wi-Fi, a building management fee, and um, some compounds they even include once a month cleaning by, you know, an AI or a cleaner. Nice. And uh, they include uh, cleaning before you move in. So they make sure that everything is clean, everything is dusted off. So yeah, so these are all included in this service fee. It's not actually agency fee. Service fee is usually your month's rent and it's paid every time you renew the contract. So that's like yearly. Rent is quite standard, I guess, or I hope. It's like one month deposit and three months advance. It's pretty standard, I guess. Um, yeah, so you need to pay that upfront, plus the, plus the service fee. Just like you need to pay like five times off the rent. So let's say your rent is 3K, so that's times five, that's 15K upfront. I guess the big difference between these two companies is the layout of the apartments. Zero catered to um, people who want to find an apartment but can't afford to, you know, live on their own. So they laid out their apartment with bigger bedrooms, no living room, no dining room, small kitchen, and small bathroom. Xiangyi is a little bit hard to say. Um, if you look at a three-bedroom apartment, you might get a two big bedrooms and one really small bedroom. Um, they will have living room and a dining area, big kitchen, and a bathroom. So Xiangyi, I guess, catered to families that would like to stay together. So that's why they have this living room, dining area, in the kitchen and usually like a decent size of the bathroom. Another thing is the furnitures. Zero's furnitures and Xiangyi's furnitures, they are pretty standard. You will get a chair, a TV, well, most of the time, an air conditioner, fridge, um, your bed, of course, a closet, and a table. So this is like pretty standard. It's all included in an apartment. The only difference when it comes down to furniture and the things included in the apartment is that when you go through the photos. So let's say in the photo, you see a mop, a pink bucket, and a broken chair. So that's all in the picture. And when you get to your apartment, they are still there. You will see the mop, the pink bucket, and the broken chair. They will not allow you to throw out the broken chair. It's one of their policies. Xiangyi, on the other hand, it's kind of unpredictable i guess style of the furniture that you would get because most of the time the photos that you would see in xiangyi's app is the showroom i give you an idea of the apartment layout and what it should look like xiangyi you could get a very standard um, modern color of the apartment or you could get a pink sofa, pink bed, and pink everything. But then again, you still have everything that they have mentioned. But it's just like, it's not very sure of the style. So while Xiangyi is unpredictable, I still recommend you to use this app because it's 5% cheaper than Zuru. Plus, a lot of Xiangyi listings are quite new and they have like, you know, clean 
modern apartment compared to Duru. Duru's apartment might be, you know, focused on um, really old, dirty buildings in Beijing. And uh, yeah, it, but it doesn't matter because you are permitted to throw away whatever furniture that you think is ugly or unnecessary for you to use as long as you replace them not everything so like i said the apartments are pretty standard there's a table a chair bed and closet and uh, whatever so whatever you took out from that room that room should have the same you know things but it doesn't need to be the same style or even the same size if you threw out a king size bed you could replace it with a single bed that's what they told me it's all good because people do it all the time they think that hey i don't like this kind of bed i will just you know throw it out and replace it later on with a cheaper one but it's still up to you it depends on what you need if you are not in china i suggest you to use Duru. but if you have time to look at apartments i suggest you to go with xiangyi or the other ways so those are the ways that i have used to find an apartment here in china comment down below and let me know which way is suited for you Again, my name is Shar. I create ESL expat guides and lifestyle videos here on YouTube. If you're into that content, consider subscribing, liking this video, and hitting and hitting that bell button. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe because in the next video, I'm going to be teaching you some Chinese words and phrases that would help you find an apartment here in China. Plus, I'm going to give you a tour of my apartment. See you next time. Bye-bye.